I do not believe high-profile professional women can just lean in. I don't believe in bond women profiles where she would wake up, be a perfect mom, perfect wife. You know, she would make love like in the movies. She would create <laughs> breakfast for all the kids and then say bye, honey, and then go to work, be an executive. Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. I'm an executive headhunter, career coach, and host of this podcast. Here, we talk about how to find your calling, how to succeed in business, and how to live well. As we're heading into the holiday season, I want to revisit some of my favorite conversations. And this week's guest was one of my favorite people of all time. She's a genuinely warm, kind, and positive person who is now a dear friend. Meet Angela Cretu, former CEO of Avon. This short episode is about the enormous pressure women experience to be perfect in every single area of their life and choosing not to do it all. If you're overwhelmed, anxious, burnt out, or possibly all three, and need some positivity as well as tips for finding a better balance in life, then this episode is for you. Before you start the video, I need your help. We have entered the British Podcast Awards and the Listener's Choice category is now open for voting. You can directly support our show by voting for us. Just click the link in the description, look up Anatomy of a Leader and get voting. And as always, please click that follow or subscribe button wherever you're listening. Without further ado, here is Angela Cretu. You can see her like in a minute with a board showing growing graphs and then go to the gym and work hard and then without breaking her uh, sweat then she also makes another run and then she meets her girlfriends and because she's also very sociable and then she gets back home and once she's back home again kids get fed but then somehow she finds a way that she smells beautifully and she's going in her black silk lingerie to to, to, to sleep back with her husband, you know, talking their day, everything looking like that. I don't believe in this kind of, you know, succession. Doesn't exist. Is, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and there is so much pressure. Mm -hmm. So much pressure to be all those things in a single day. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking life cycles here. I'm talking a day cycle. Mm -hmm. It's a huge pressure. And God knows we have days, you know, we are completely exhausted. Being a parent, and I'm talking just being a mom, being a father. Yeah? So being a parent is such, it's, it's a full-time job. For That's sure. not too much everything else that we need to do. Then being a good, I, I forgot the charity things. And you, know, you also need to do charity in that day, as meeting community and doing all this. Stuff. So I do not believe they can simply lean in and do it all. Um, I, 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 I really believe in the ability and hopefully the, the freedom of, of choosing those activities and those relationships that that together give one the, the sense of full engagement on the, with their present. Not living in the past, not in the future, but right now. And it's not, if, it's not easy to, to be content because one can plan a huge list. Like I only feel happy if in, I'm in a uh, beautiful big house with uh, two cars, with I don't know what, with a very rich, yes, uh, status or, and, and keep postponing that happiness or looking for partnerships and relationships that would meet that mold, that would fit that mold. And, and I have many people that I've met, and by the way, no matter the culture, mm -hmm. that would be in this continuous search and unhappiness and utter unhappiness of not being able to find themselves in this search. Mm. So yeah. it's about having <clears throat> too many, no, I don't want to say it, too many expectations. It's, it's, it's having too completely, too, too demanding. Too, too, too it's demanding. choosing too many things to aspire to. Uh, yes. And what I'm learning as I'm getting older is that you have to pick yeah, you just have to choose, and that's it, and not feel guilty, mm -hmm. and and you, you you don't have to pick the same things every day. Because I'm a very organized person, it's my it's my trait it can be weakness at times to the desperation of my husband. I need to plan everything, to or or an advantage when I end my days with a sense of fulfillment. So it depends on how it's played, but 
when I'm planning my days, I, I can I can choose what are my sources of energy, where I spend my time, where am I adding value, and I'm offering energy. And I'm trying not to go back to sleep in a deplete energy mode. I don't wait for my sleep to, to um, cover what I've missed during the day. I'm trying to balance it already before my sleep. Sleep, it's a regeneration, um, healing time. It's not to cover what you've lost. Yeah, so I'm trying to fulfill the, that balance. Uh, sometimes I succeed, sometimes I, I, I do not. And, and you're right, you, you pick. But then your partner, and I think this is extremely important, and, uh, and that's why I say I don't believe in bond women who can succeed as well by themselves. Yeah, and, and I, I found very few examples. I admire them deeply, and I hope it's working long term for them. For me, it wouldn't have worked. I mean, uh, at home, I need that support. I need that partnership. I need that um, form of um, therapy, in a way. Mm -hmm. It's one of my sources of energy, my, my short or long walk in the evening with my husband that we do around our neighborhood. Mm. And that's our, our time, just two of us. No kid, no, uh, you know, when, when I'm finding my way and, and he f invests the energy mm -hmm. as well. So, how often you do know, you do that? Almost every evening. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's what just our been? time. It's just our time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's 20 minutes, other times it's, I don't know, 45 an hour. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But just like walking, something I heard about going for a walk, for a meeting, but even, you know, with your partner, especially when you have difficult things to talk about. Walking is particularly great is because you're walking side by side and you're looking in the same direction. Oh, interesting. As opposed to looking at each other and it being you versus me, you're actually, it's a it's a physical aspect of looking in the same direction that you are moving on the same path. This I can't wait to tell him that tonight. Mm -hmm. So thank you for this. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen it this way, but. Mm. I see I see how it makes sense. Mm. During yeah. COVID, when obviously you couldn't go anywhere and our kids were really small, my husband and I would take these walks and that's when we will kind of thrash things out. We haven't really done that since, but I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that because I think that's a really great tip. And then when we do, like for example, we had a date during the Christmas holidays, and instead of taking the tube or a taxi, we walked back home from Trafalgar Square and that was an, like a great conversation. And at the end of the walk, we went to sleep and I had, I just, I didn't have that anxiety that I often that. get in the evening. It was just truly, just felt very connected, but also just really satisfied. And it was such a simple thing. It's a beautiful, it's so beautiful. I think maybe the most important thing that I think we've covered today. Mm -hmm. um, people forget how to take little reset moments. Mm -hmm. They are all waiting for the one week big holiday of the year. And it ends up badly usually because you put so much expectation against that one week. And especially if we go with kids, you know, everything goes. Don't haywire. get started on the yeah, that exactly. comes with Christmas. It's so you much. are coming back needing yeah. another holiday to rest yeah. from that holiday. But the little reset moments and never put the pressure to be too long or too strenuous. Or if, is it gym or a walk or meditation or yoga? Or Make it small, but have it in mm -hmm. because then brain doesn't find excuses. Oh, oh, you don't have time. You don't have time for this. You say, I'm going to put 10 minutes of yoga in. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Nobody can say, I don't have 10 minutes. Yeah? You can say, I don't have half an hour. I don't have an hour. But 10 minutes for yourself can be there. Exactly what you called out is a walk. You don't have to have it every day. That was a long walk. Mm -hmm. It was a bigger reset moment. Mm -hmm. But can it be something smaller? Mm -hmm. You know, like just going, you know, for, for uh, 20 minutes, yes, to walk it's or so do something else. It's so easy to just yeah. fall into a pattern. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm too busy. Just too busy. Oh, yeah. you know, and yeah. not put the importance on the things that really move the needle. And it those helps. Things the I needle. mean, I tell you, with my... The last four years have been maybe the most intense professional years of my life. 
We had lots of crises in our portfolio. We had a war with Russia, with Ukraine, that business-wise, supply chain-wise, ethical ethical decisions have had to be made, you know, L- huge dilemma to, to be tackled. As well, you know, the brand rejuvenation as such, the, the, the entire transformation, very intense years. With that being said, people are generally looking at their key uh, stakeholders in the business. And in, in my case, the, the, the buck stopped with me. They're looking at me like you would look at the stewardess in a plane when there is a turbulent flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has a responsibility, yes, not to create additional anxiety. But that cannot come as an, how can I say necessarily as a, as a, you have to feel that composure and that com- that feeling of composure. You cannot fake it. Mm-hmm. You cannot fake you are in control. Yeah, you need to build up that sense of self-trust. Mm-hmm. And that can only come with this little reset moment, with a good sleep. I am obsessed, obsessed to ensure I have a good sleep. How much sleep do you get? I do get, I don't know, seven to nine uh, mm-hmm. hours at times. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. I've, I've experimented. I, I have my Apple Watch. Yeah. And I'm tracking my sleep. I don't know for how long. It's ever since I got it. So it's been several years now. And I can tell you that if I've had bad sleep, I just cannot moderate my emotions. Yes. I'm snappy. I'm irritable. I you can't make decisions. Yes. And I feel it. And then also when you go like a level deeper when I'm tracking what my deep sleep is, that makes a that's a true difference. measure by the way and yes. the deep sleep comes with finding time for rest relaxation and connection i think that makes a big difference when you feel connected i mean whether it's talking about you know your social circle to your partner that you feel validated in the world i that makes it basically it's all it it's all in a way sleep. energy yeah. and i'm not i'm not i don't mean energy in an esoteric sense i don't want mm-hmm. to go there but very practical you know as fun the fundamental physics is it, it you know knowledge that we all have is the understanding that everything that we do you know at the end we are human beings are mm-hmm. you know energy charged organisms so everything that we do activities words thoughts they're all based on certain electrical electric mm-hmm. impulses so the more we balance ourselves creating a and controlling this input and output of the energy much of it sensible inflicted by the way speaking about the anxiety we with 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 act, with activities that will will um, give us that sense of relaxation I think the better for the health, for the presence you build with the others. Because mm-hmm. look at the leaders around the world, an anxious an anxious leader or professional, doesn't even matter at the end, or politician or whom, whatever roles we play in a society, you can immediately feel a presence that it, um, you know, it feels good in, in, in her or his own skin. Mm-hmm. But like good, a good in a sense, yes, exactly. You feel it, mm-hmm. and you automatically you want to be part of that environment. It's 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 a it's a presence that helps that supports. So I I would say in my professional journey and as well life journey, and of course I'm still learning, and learning happens through failures as well not just through all good stories. Of course, it's easy right now to call out, oh, I have that insight and that insight and that's it. I'm the 50, for sure, the 70. If we meet again, when I will turn 70, I will have maybe different insights or different, uh, you know, uh, dimensions Mm -hmm. in in understanding the world and and how it works. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to discovery. You've been listening to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. If you love listening to these inspiring leadership stories from all walks of life and would like to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe or follow wherever you are listening. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.